Hey everybody, welcome to the course. I am John Merritt from Born to Produce, and you are going to learn Cubase by making this trance track from start to finish. So whilst we're going to start with the basics, we're going to progress fairly quickly into more sort of intermediate and advanced level skills and techniques, both on the Cubase and music production level, things like advanced mixing, advanced automation, and a whole load of other stuff. But first of all, of course, as always, we're going to start with the basics, just enough so that in the next lesson, we can make our melody on top of the beat. So first of all, we're going to create an empty project from Steinberg Hub. So we're going to have prompt for project location selected, and we're going to click create empty. And I'm just going to put mine on the desktop. And I've already made a folder called BTP trance tutorial, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and obviously put it wherever you want on your hard drive. I'm just putting it on the desktop for ease of access, select folder. So I'm going to presume that you've sort of used Cubase at least once or twice before, and you've got your sort of sound card linked up and everything. If you haven't, you can just go to the studio tab, studio setup, and then just make sure you've got your sound card selected here. Or if you haven't got a dedicated sound card, then just use the generic low latency ASIO driver. Also, let's go to the project settings and make sure we're working at the same sample rate. So we're just going to work at 44.1k. There's no need to really work higher than that. You can work higher if you really want to. If I was recording, we'd be working at 96k. Or if I was planning on sort of rendering out parts of the track and bring it in uh, to then manipulate further, we'd also be working at 96k so we just don't lose any definition to the high-end frequencies. But for now, for this project, 44 is absolutely fine. Bit depth, 24-bit, no problem. Okay, that's all good. So I know a lot of you will have already used Cubase, but I will just, for those people who are new to it, just quickly explain what's going on here. So obviously this is the project window. This is where you spend pretty much all of your time in Cubase. You have these zones around the outside, which you can activate by hiding or showing with the zone buttons. The right hand zone, this one is basically where you bring in instruments, VSTIs or media. So this is where you find stuff that's on your computer or you know in Cubase and bring it into your project. So for now, what we want to do is actually go to loops and samples. This is all of Cubase's built in sound libraries and we're gonna to go to the GASE library. Uh, this library is just literally full of tons of different one shot samples. And if Cubase isn't automatically playing the sample, just make sure you've got this button here, auto play button selected. So the first thing we're going to load up is a kick just to get the basic beat down so we can build our melody on top of it. So rather than try and hunt through all of these different samples, which are a mix of different ones, we're going to just filter that out. So in this section at the top, if you don't see the filter attributes, you can just click the show hide filter attributes button there. And we'll see that we've got some options for sort of filtering the results. So if we just scroll down under subcategory, we've got kick drum there. And then we go, we've got only kicks. And we want this one, FC01 GF Kick 1 Saw. And we're gonna right click and go create sampler track. And Cubase automatically creates us our sampler track channel and also loads the kick drum into the actual sampler control. And the sample can be played on this keyboard down here. There's a few different options like pitch, uh, volume and pan and stuff like that, but we don't need to worry about any of that just yet. Uh, we'll look a little bit more in depth at the controls of the sampler soon, but for now, we just want to add this kick to our project. So the first thing we're gonna do is just change the grid settings from bar up here to adapt to zoom. This means that as I zoom in, I'll get sort of more and more grid lines, as you can see. And it means that when we draw something in, it'll snap to these grid lines. If we have it just on bar, it'll only snap to the main bar grid lines. 
Okay, so to draw something in, very simple, just hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and your cursor will turn to the draw tool and you can just draw in a block of MIDI. You can also select the draw tool from up here and you can also select it from the right click tool menu as well. So to zoom in and out like I just did, I just held the control or command key on my keyboard and I use my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. It means I can zoom in wherever I put my mouse pointer. But you can also click in the timeline where you get this four way sort of arrow and you can drag up or down to zoom in and out. You can also hit G to zoom in, H to zoom out. And you can use the controls down here, which you can just hover over with your mouse and use the mouse wheel, or you can grab the control point and move it with your mouse. Okay, so let's get some kicks in. So at the moment when I place my playhead in and hit play, obviously we're not actually hearing anything because there's nothing in this section of MIDI. So let's double click on that. And in the lower zone, you should open up this MIDI editor and you can see how we've got a keyboard on the side. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's just turn this kick down a bit. So let's just click on the channel itself and then we get a volume control over here, which we can just turn down a bit. Let's go to about minus eight, anywhere around that is absolutely fine. And we're just turning it down preemptively because obviously we're going to be adding loads more to this track so we don't want the whole volume to get too loud and the, the master out will start getting overloaded as a very bad thing so the best way to combat that part of gain staging is just to turn down the first thing you put into the project usually the kit because that's the loudest thing that is in your project and just turn that down enough and then you're pretty much good to go and you don't have to worry about it again so in our MIDI editor, I'm just going to scroll a bit over to the left. And C3, that's basically the root note in the sampler track. So if I go back to the sampler control window, you can see here we've got that blue key highlighted there with the arrow pointing down to C3. Now this means that whenever I play the kick on C3, it's playing it at its original pitch. If I play it on any other key, it's playing it lower or higher. And you can change this if you want. So if I load in, say, a pluck sample, which is obviously musical and it's in G, then all I'll do is move this to the G key and then everything would sort of line up properly. So when I triggered the sample in the MIDI editor, it played the right note at the right time. We're just going to leave this on C. It's just a kick, no problem. So we can go back to our editor window. And the first thing you want to do is just make sure that we're on 1/8 quantize, or you could be on 1/16 quantize if you want, it's no problem. And we're just going to draw in four kicks on C3. So again, you can just hold Alt or Option, and then we can draw in a kick on each and every beat. So there we go, we've got a basic beat. Okay, so we've got our kick in the project, that's great, but it's a little bit slow at the moment. I want this to be a bit more energetic uh, and quicker, this trance track. So we're going to change the tempo. Now we can change the tempo on the transport panel. So we've got a couple of different transport panels at the moment showing in Cubase. We've got this one down the bottom and you've got the tempo here, which you can just click on once. And then we're going to type 134, hit enter. And now you'll see kick plays a lot faster. You also have a transport panel, a floating transport panel, which I've got active at the moment. Now, if you don't see that, that's fine. Just hit F2 on your keyboard, or you can come to the transport menu and just click the transport panel button to activate or deactivate it. So let's just have a quick look at this. Uh, just so you know, I mean, we've got these marker settings here which we don't really need so you can customize the transport panel and what's shown on it by clicking on the little gear icon here at the end and then we can just change we don't need the locators so we'll get rid of that it just shortens everything makes it a little bit more manageable and we're just going to stick this up at the top where it's out the way not in the way of any of the sort of menu items and it's just nice to have a separate transport panel just if i want to hit play and i'm already up here I know it seems lazy, but I don't have to move my mouse all the way to the bottom of the screen. Um, okay, so that's fine. We've got it here. Great. Now all we need to do is just duplicate or copy across our kick. So as you probably know, there's a few ways of doing this. You can hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and just drag it across. You can also grab the central control point on the right hand side and just drag that out. Or you can select any amount of the objects and hit Control or Command D on your keyboard. So there we go, we've got 16 bars now of kick. So let's just set our loop region. So I can, if I want to, I can sort of just click in the top part of the timeline here 
and then I can drag this out or I can modify this at any time I want by clicking and dragging the ends but also I can select all of the events and just hit P on the keyboard which will automatically set the loop region but let's say I want to set the loop region activate it and have it play at the same time well I can do that as well if I just select all of the objects and hit Alt P then you can see it just automatically activates the loop region and makes it play as well. I can also deactivate the loop region on either of the transport panels as well with that cycle or activate cycle button. Now just so you know, the kick is a little bit sort of short and stubby. Although it's got a nice bit of punch to it, it's probably a little bit too short for this trance track. So what we're gonna do, I mean, we are gonna layer up the kick as well in a later lesson, but we're also going to do some sort of more advanced kick processing on this sample to make it sort of really fit with the trance track and sound a bit more beefy. So that's it for now. We've got enough of a kick pattern just to get the melody of our track down. So that's what we're gonna do in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching guys and girls. I'll see you in the next one. And if this was helpful to you, please do consider liking the video and subscribing for more content and hitting the alert bell so you don't miss out on our future videos.